Hello again, everyone, and welcome to A Short Stop with a Short Stop. Today, we're going to talk about Always Be Ready. If you can remember in the 1988 World Series, the Dodgers were playing the Oakland A's and uh, it was the bottom of the ninth and the uh, Dodgers were behind by one run. And Kirk Gibson comes up to the plate and uh, as a pitch hitter, but he had a pulled hamstring and one of the other leg, his knee was about killing and he just hobbled up to the plate. But he had been in the uh, uh, locker room, they have an underground hitting cage. He was taking batting practice thinking that he might be able to be coming up pitch hitting. But he was ready to do it. And in that pitch hit uh, that he had, he hit a two-run home run to win the very first game of the 1988 World Series for the Dodgers. But he, he stayed ready. Baseball players have to do things which we call repetition, repetition, repetition. You have to practice fielding every day. You practice hitting every day. You practice throwing every day. You, your pitchers are, are constantly trying to run and stay in shape and keep their legs and body uh, perfectly fit to be able to go out and do the best that they can do. But also, every spring training, we always went and did things over and over again. It was just repetition, repetition, repetition. But the, I'm going to talk about one that I'm really excited about every time I think about it or hear it. In 1951, there was a guy by the name of Bobby Thompson, and they were playing the Brooklyn Dodgers. It was the New York Giants and the Brooklyn Dodgers, and the, the Giants were down by two runs, and there was two guys on in the bottom of the ninth, and Bob, uh, Bobby Thompson hits a three-run home run to beat the Brooklyn Dodgers, and it was called the shot heard around the world, and it was, if you can hear the radio announcer on this, he goes to Giants run the pennant, the Giants run the pennant. He, he said it about 15 times. He was so excited when he was running around the bases. But he stayed ready. He stayed ready to be able to do what he did uh, at a given time to help his team and, and uh, to try to do his best at the job that he was doing. But last week or so, I've been to a few funerals. And what I'm trying to get to is we always have to be ready for death. And we're all going to die at some point in time. Our bodies are just going to wear out. Uh, the scriptures speak of death. In Hebrews chapter 9, and verse 27, it says, all will die. And it doesn't say some, it says all. And that means all of us are going to die at some given time. And in James chapter 2 and verse 26, it says the body and the spirit will be separated. And in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 19, it says the body will return to the dust from which it came. But in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 through 8, it says there is a time to die. But what about after we die? This is the important thing. This is what I want us to be ready for. It says that there's going to be a judgment that's going to follow death. And again, in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, it says there's going to be an appointment, and that's going to be death, but after the death comes judgment. And in Romans chapter 2, and verse 2, it says it's going to be a judgment according to truth. And what is truth? And that, that, that comes from the Bible. I'd like to read here in Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15, but please pay attention to this. He said, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat upon it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. Now this was according to their deeds. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every one of them, according to their deeds. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. 
And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Now, that's a pretty ominous thing. That, that's something that we do not want to happen. We want our names to be written in the book of life because we have to be ready at all times. There may be a day that we're going to die, but there also may be a day that Jesus Christ comes back. And those are the two situations that we need to be ready for. Because in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10, it says if we're faithful unto death, He's going to give us a crown. He's going to give us a crown of life. And that's even better than hitting a home run in the bottom of the ninth to win the pennant or to win the World Series. Always, always be ready. But how do we do that? First of all, we've got to obey that gospel plan of salvation and then be added to the church as they were in Acts chapter 2. And then we will be ready if we live our lives according to the Word of God the way He wants us to. Thank you again for being with a shortstop with a shortstop.